Hello producers, it's Ozgun here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use reference tracks in your advantage when you are making mixing decisions, when you are balancing your kick and bass. And also we will talk about how to balance your drums, how to balance your top end by just checking the reference tracks. And also we will talk a little bit about the coloring. Again, we will just check a reference track and see how we can use the information from the track for our track. And if you're ready, let's get into the tutorial. Okay guys, I just quickly prepared this track for the sake of this tutorial. I made a drop with some 303 and a very basic bass line. Let's check the track first. <laughs> So I just roughly have some drums, some background sounds and a bass line and acid shots. So everything according to what we need in a drop in this kind of techno tracks. And let's say I just finished the full production and now I like to release the track. I need to finalize the mix down, make the balances between, you know, kick, bass, the drums, the relationships. And mostly since you produce on the track for a while, your ears tend to get deaf to, you know, making decisions. You probably don't even know anymore, like what is the good balance on this track because you get so tired because you're listening it over and over while you are producing it. So in this stage of producing, in this stage, you can get the referencing technique. So for this, you are going to need approximately two or three tracks, but today for the sake of this tutorial, I have only one track, but it's best if you have just three tracks approximately similar to your genre. It doesn't need to be the same key for this technique but make sure they have similar bass groove or like similar vibe of the track then the referencing is gonna make much more sense if the tracks are similar to each other in terms of vibe in terms of technical stuff so for this track i like to choose medix acid soul track for my mixing reference so now i like to put my reference track to some empty channel in here and if you download or check the previous uh, video, I shared a full FL Studio starting template and in there I'll, I already set up this channel for you. But if not, you should just unroot the reference track from your master. Because currently my master, let's say, has a compressor, it has a clipper, it could have more elements inside of it. And if our reference track is gonna root the master, it's gonna also apply it by this compressor, this clipper, this maximizer, whatever you have in your master, and they will just clash. So the referencing is not gonna work. We just need to hear the reference track as it is. That's why I need to unroot it from the master. In the reference track, just go to the output section in here and set a separate output for the reference. Now, the reference track channel is just an, another master channel. Because like, if this was rooted to the master like that, we will get, you know, so much distorted sound. But without it, we will just hear it as it is. So this is the first thing to be careful on. And the second thing is like that. Since we are searching to get the kick bass, kick and sub balance from the reference track for our track, it's best if we can find a spot with just kick and bass. Like if there is nothing else, that would be amazing. That would be the perfect spot for, you know, getting the reference. So in here, you can just search for the intro of the track. This part is probably gonna be good. If you cannot find any part like that, like this. So now I hear the kick bass and there's not much element, so I can clearly hear what's going on. But if you cannot find a spot, a clean spot like that, I'm gonna put a card. You can just extract the kick and bass. Then you can just have the, you know, extracted solo kick bass from the reference track. I'm not gonna do it again in this video, but yeah, just check the cards if you don't know how to do it. You can steal kicks and basses from any track. And with this, you can just apply this trick much more easier. But we are lucky because this track has this part and there is only kick on the bass, nothing much. So we can just use this part in our advantage. 
So first thing, this trick is already mastered, right? That's why it's so loud and probably it's gonna be hard to match our levels with this master track. So that's why we should just lower the reference track volume so it doesn't get that much loud. So in here, the values are not that much important. All we're aiming for to lower the volumes so we can just race with the reference track without any problems. I just made the reference track in minus 15 loops. So now it's not that much loud and we can get our referencing. So first, I like to put an EQ and we will just cut the high frequencies. Let's say 100 until 50 hertz, something like that. And I like to put a fruity stereo in answer to make the reference track completely mono. Now we can only hear the low area, just the sub region, and we will see it much more clear. So in here, you are going to load a span, which is again a free plugin. And you can just see the waveform. You can see so much detail with span. And I was using this high resolution previously. And just holding it like that for comparison. But recently I find the YouTube channel, it's Abstract Music Lab. I'm gonna also give a credit for him in the description because I just steal his preset like that. Just check these values in span. He was using this um, settings and, and it's more detailed than the high resolution mode in the span itself. So these settings, if you just do that, the span is becoming like that. So now we can see much more detail and we don't need to hold it because when we stop, the overlap is going to stay there. So after resetting your reference track for kick and bass comparison, we will just cut the track like that and mute the bass part. Now we got the kick part. And if I can mouse over it, I can see like how loud the reference track kick is. Let me just direct drop this part to my drop so I can properly just make the exact referencing AB comparison. And also I'm gonna deactivate my master clipper and let's check again. Kick. Kick off the reference check hits minus 11 decibels. I'm gonna load a notebook and let's write it like that. Kick minus 11 db so the notebook is useful when you have multiple tracks by the way so now let's mute the kick and activate the bass part and if you zoom in like i can clearly hear the kick and approximately around here So we can see that the bass, the sub, also at minus 11 dB, but like maybe half dB less, something like that. And we got more information in here. We can see that the next bass frequency, like this is D sharp. This is the main note of the reference track. And this is the second octave D sharp. So the second octave D sharp is minus 15.3 decibel. So let's call it root two for bass and it's minus 15. And with this, you can just check the other parts as well. So now we see like the sub, the bass and the kick. We know this three value and now we can just apply these values to our own track as well. Let's mute the reference for now and activate our kick drum. So before we balance our kick, we should go to the reference track and just copy this EQ to our master. And probably let's make this mono star enhancer also to our master. So now we can like compare them in equal uh, aspects. I'm gonna make our kick to minus 11, just as in the reference. Just a little bit more. And now we got the kicks are in same loudness. Now it's time to check the bass. Let's go solo the bass.
now we got approximately the same loudness and uh, maybe we can check the harmonics so the second root was 15 db on reference we got 16 db so i don't need to adjust it because it's already so close like i don't care to be exact we are just trying to be around the loudness and then we will just fine tune it but this is just for the you know making the first perfect balance together and now we can just compare them this is ours let's go check the reference track maybe i don't need to cut it now So we are really close in terms of balances. I can see that the reference track bass so much harder because of the probably saturation and stuff and our bass are currently a bit dry. But if you but yeah, if you just ignore the harmonics, the saturation, the richness of the sound selection, these balances are totally close to each other. Since we got a really close relationship as the reference track, now we can just deactivate the EQ and the mono an answer you can do it from the master as well and now we can check how our track sounds like if i activate the mastering And as you see, now since I have a proper balance, I can just maximize my track very much. So now we can balance our drums just according to these um, values that we created. But maybe for now it's best to deactivate the maximizer. Because now we will just go to the drop part of the reference track. And we are searching for a spot um, with the drums, like all drums playing. And probably it's the second part of the drop. Let's make the span default. And now I'm gonna play some portion of the drop. I don't like to get copyright struck. That's why I like to just maybe just mute it from here. So you got the point. I'm just gonna mute it for now from here. We will just check the visuals. This is the loudest part of the reference track. So if I hold the span, now I'm gonna check. So the low end of the track, is hitting minus 38 approximately that area and as you see the high frequencies the drums the cymbals the hi-hats the crashes whatever they have it's just approximately same loudness with the kick and bass so we can just use this in our advantage we can just now mute the reference track we know if the reference track has high frequencies as much as the low frequencies right now we can just solo our kick bass and the drums and we can try to get some approximately same same loudness. I can loop this portion. It has all the drums. Let's make it default. So as you see, we got something really weird going on in here. First, we got to just see what it is and how to solve it. Okay, this is the rolling hi-hat. Maybe we can such in it more. And maybe we can tame the annoying frequencies. Just in here. Much more better. Now let's activate the rest. Like just ad adjusting the channels individually and now in the visual we are getting 
to say approximately the same loudness, the high end and the low end. They are just same as the reference trick. Now that's perfect. We know of the kick and bass balance. We made them perfect. We made the drum relationship with the kick and bass. They are really good. So now I can just blend the rest of the elements because those are the main things that we need to be careful. So since I have the drums and kick and bass, I can just put the 303 and just balance it. <laughs> So I feel like the low end is less loud than the 303's low of mid frequencies. If you check, the 303 when it's playing, it's getting louder than my low end, and which is totally a problem. Again, we can check the reference track and see like how its uh, 303 sounds like. This is how Medix tracks look like. Like he got, like he tamed the low mid of his 303 in these frequencies and his low end is the biggest thing in that region. So let's try to achieve that, achieve the same vibe. I'm gonna go to my 303 and I'm just gonna EQ low frequencies, like low mids like that. And now let's activate the rest. Yeah, that's so much better, but I'm gonna get another EQ because we can still tame a little bit of low mids. So that's perfect. Now we have several elements. Let's tr quickly mix them as well. So this is just according to our taste. Now we can just compare the full spectrum. As you see, we are really close, but I can see that we are a bit too much. We have a bit too much frequencies on 3K and we are just lacking a little bit of frequencies on 1K. If you check the reference, we don't need to be exactly the same. But yeah, now I'm talking about the coloring, coloring on the mastering. So if that's the case, we can just fill our 1k in the master, why not? Because the span of the reference track got much more precise in the 1k. So for boosting 1k, you don't need any fancy plugins. Just get some EQ, just get the parametric EQ. So the fifth band is approximately on 1k. Let's try to boost it a little bit, maybe a bit narrow band. <laughs> And yeah, with this EQ, you can just make the little fine tunes. And we are trying to just feel the frequencies as much as the medics did, as much as the reference track did. 
So just a reminder, so this project is not finished. So there's still much more things to fix in the mix down. That's why we cannot get exactly same and you don't need to get exactly same. That's the thing. Now, after we properly reference our kick and bass, the drums and the overall coloring, we have a direction like we know how we want to finish the track. And after you make the production, when you are making the final mix down, just getting a reference, just getting like maybe 15 minutes of research of the reference track, we will give you so much insight, so much analysis how you should finish your track, where is your track is lacking and which parts you should be fixing on. The referencing is gonna help you in so in so many ways you cannot imagine. So don't be lazy, just get to our three tracks and do and apply the things I show you today and, and I promise you the outcome, the result, the final mix down of your track is gonna make much more sense after referencing, after using reference tracks. So yeah, finally, before I end the video, I'm gonna just activate the final limiter and see how our trick become. <laughs> Like as you see, now we got the full spectrum response with a very decent, very balanced frequency response. I showed you how to use reference tracks in your advantage when you are making mixing decisions. So today that was it guys. I hope you can apply this to your own productions as well. See you on the next video. Bye bye.